Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.1 beta one. This is available to developers and iOS 17.1 public beta one should be available usually by the time you're watching this video or within the next couple of days. Now this particular update was released alongside a lot of other updates with iPad OS 17.1 beta one, watch OS 10.1 beta one, along with Mac OS 14.1 beta one and TV OS and HomePod OS 17.1 beta one. And this came in at a very large 6.46 gigabytes. That's on my iPhone 15 pro max. Anytime you switch from a regular version to a beta, it's going to reinstall everything and it's going to be a large install. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new as this has quite a few changes in it. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 21 B five zero four five H. Usually as we get closer to a final release, we're at the letter a since iOS 17.1 one is at the first beta since iOS 17, it's going to be a little bit until we get to that point. Now this particular update has a few new features in it. The first thing is a modem update. So whether you're on the 15 pro max or the iPhone 14, they should have an update as well for the modem. If it was having issues with connectivity. Now the first new feature has to do with music. If we go into music, you'll see, we have some songs here, of course, but if we go into our library and then maybe we go into a playlist, tap the little button in the upper right, and we have the option to switch to a new favorited playlist. This is something that Apple talked about before that they would be adding. And you can actually see this. If we go into a song, we can favorite songs now with this little star. And now we've had the ability to favorite things before, but we've got a nice new animation here. We can favorite it, then go back go to our library, go to our songs, go to this option in the upper right, go to our favorites, and it'll have all of our favorite songs here. So that's a really nice update as well. And you have that under albums as well with all of your favorites and more. Now, also, if we go back, we'll go back one, go to a playlist. Maybe we'll turn off the filter for now. And if maybe we go to the, my mix playlist, scroll down to the bottom, give it a second and a bunch of song suggestions automatically pop in. It will give you suggestions of things that thinks you may like. So you've got different artists that you might listen to, and then you can add those or decide not to. Additionally, if you're playing a song and you're on the lock screen, we'll go to the lock screen. You'll see here that we have that new favorites button here as well. So press it and it will unfavorite, press it to favorite and it's interactive, just like the widgets are now as well. Another change is if we go into our settings, go to sound and haptics and under ringtones, they've actually updated this and they've updated it in the way that your old ringtones come back for whatever reason. And all of the new ones that were introduced with iOS 17 have disappeared. So they're all gone. Maybe they'll bring them back later, or maybe iOS 17 was actually made before the iOS 17 RC was, or at the same time, I would imagine they'll come back, but they'll probably make it so that it works properly with all of your custom tones as well. So you'll see it's completely different. Now, all of the ringtones that were there before are not here any longer. So they'll probably bring those back. I liked some of the new ones quite a bit as well. Now we're all familiar with that new feature where you can name drop or airdrop just by bringing two iPhones close together like this. And one of the new features is it now transfers over the internet. That's something Apple said would be coming later. And there's actually a setting for that under your settings, go to general, go to airdrop, and you'll see there's a new option for out of range, use cellular data continue to send and receive content when Wi-Fi is not available during airdrop. So maybe you send something to someone, maybe it's a bunch of pictures you need to leave and you could go away and it will download over the internet that way, instead of you having to stand next to that person while it actually transfers. So that's finally been added. Also, they've added something else on the 14 pro max. So if we take a look at the 14 pro max here and maybe go into the flashlight, you'll see that the new live activity for the flashlight has been added. That was only on the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max before. So, or the 15s with the dynamic Island. So that's something they added that they've brought to all of the different devices. Now, something they haven't brought to all of the different devices for some reason are the new battery settings. We'll take a look at those in a moment, but those new settings that I've shared before, which are in battery under your battery, battery health and charging, the 80% limit for optimized charging is just not there. Why they haven't brought it yet. I'm not sure. Hopefully it will be in a future update. Now, additionally, Apple has added something with watch OS 10.1. They've finally added name drop the double tap for series nine and ultra two is not here yet, but it's sort of in the code. It's just not there. So if we go into the watch and then within the watch, if we go down to gestures, it's just not there for some reason. Some people are seeing this sort of show up it's in the code, but it's not available to use yet. Also, 
I'm having problems installing it, but name drop is there. It's actually already installed with 10.0.2, but it's not on my watch. However, the name drop feature is there as there's actually a settings available there for it. If you have 10.1, we'll talk about that maybe in a different video. Now, as far as the release notes, well, there's some good things to mention here. Specifically, they've fixed some things. Now, Apple has not updated their feedback app yet with the latest updates. However, if you go to the public website, I'll link this in the description where you can see all of the latest updates. It's public facing, just tap on view release notes. You don't have to be a developer to see this. Just log in and you'll scroll down and you'll see the same release notes. Now they resolved an issue with widgets, remote widgets. If you're using Mac OS 14 Sonoma, where they would just appear blank. If you're using a widget that's on your iPhone, but not your Mac, that's one of the new features. Hopefully that will help the issue where sort of widgets just disappear in general also. So that hopefully will be fixed. They've also fixed another issue here, as you can see for SKAD network, and then there's known issues for Apple wallet. So quite a few bugs that are still there for Apple wallet. They do give some workarounds for some things such as customers are unable to link their bank account to a card in wallet from settings, start the connection flow in wallet. So quite a few bugs here, but not as many as we had before. There's only about 10 or so known issues and two resolved issues. The notes are pretty small this time around. As far as the notification bug, that's still here. You can see it here. Let me actually close the music here. We'll just get rid of that. Go to our notification center and you can see it here. It just sort of jumps in and we've talked about this before. As far as going to different pages and pulling down that stutter is still here. However, one of the regulars that I talked to that actually watches my videos, he's told me that he's gotten feedback that they've actually fixed this in the next public release. So it looks like maybe they'll release it with 17.0.3 to fix this sort of stuttery issue or possibly 17.1 when it's available to the public. As far as overall performance, I really haven't noticed any difference whatsoever on this device, the 15 pro max, as well as maybe the iPhone 11 performance actually seems pretty good. And benchmark scores actually show that. And I'll show that in a minute, but you'll see scrolling is fast, maybe going into music is fast. And if there's a game I should try just to see if it works with good frame rates, instead of maybe Minecraft, something else, whether that's Genshin impact or call of duty, let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as the battery life, well, that's going to take a few days to measure. My battery hasn't been great lately, but I think there's some issues with that and I'm trying to fix that. The first thing I did is I uninstalled Instagram as quite a few people have been saying that was slowing everything down and the battery was terrible and it was making the hot, the device hot. If we take a look at the last six days, and of course, if you didn't see this before, I'm at hundred percent capacity on the newest phone today. I've had four hours and 32 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 48 minutes of screen idle time. This is much better than the day before since I installed Instagram or uninstalled Instagram. And also I had a lot of usage from Safari. And so what I did is I disabled the profiles. I removed them in settings and you'll see yesterday, I only had three hours and 19 minutes and used over 75% of my battery. So, so far since removing Instagram and also getting rid of those profiles, it seems like it might have helped quite a bit. So I'll have to wait and see. Plus I installed the update and everything else and I'm still at 45% battery. So I think that's going to be much better than it was. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 beta one, I would say probably not at this point. There's not really a reason to, unless you want to try out maybe the new name drop feature with your Apple watch or something specific with the music app. Otherwise I would probably wait until it's a little more stable with beta two, maybe beta three or later. So as far as that goes, I'd probably skip it at this point at least wait for iOS 17.1 public beta one. If you haven't already now, as far as when to expect the next update, well, we could expect it within a couple of weeks, typically with early betas, maybe two weeks from now around the 10th or 11th of October, and maybe a release in November or so. It just depends. Apple has really changed things up this year a little bit. We're about a week behind what we were last year with betas. So we're not really sure at this point, but usually there's a four betas or so sometimes more, sometimes less. I would say maybe November or so October, we could see a release as far as the overall heat of the device. It's nice and cool to the touch, especially after uninstalling Instagram. Every time I pick it up with the screen off, it's nice and cool. When I pick it up, it's cold to the touch, which is really nice. Definitely a departure from what some other people are reporting. And in my tests yesterday with iOS 17.0.2, I found that it was three degrees warmer when running Geekbench compared to the 14 pro max. So far I've had no issues myself. Now, as far as benchmark scores, Let's take a look at that. The 15 pro max is actually running a little bit low with today's update. Now I may need to run this again, 
but let's take a look. You'll see side by side with the 14 pro max in my left hand, multi-core is actually lower than the 14 pro max based on the history. It was higher. So I think it'll improve. I'll have to check it again, but compared on the 14 pro max from 17.0.2, we're actually a little bit higher for single core by one point and a little bit higher for multi-core as well. So it's doing a little bit better. It's been great at either way with 17.0.2. It was even higher than the previous one. So I think it's going to be a decent update, especially since it's the first beta. Now, as I find more features, of course, I'll let you know in a different video, if there's anything else in this update. And if you've found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.